I'm high. Yeah. Clearly. I have a clarification from the last time we spoke that you helped me significantly to get into a place where I unconditionally love my partner. Sometimes. Like everyone. Yeah, well, I guess and that's where I'm going is. Yeah, we know. <laughs> so what you said to me was that I have set up my blocks for lack of a better word you've thrown the resistance on your trail that's it that's you've it. developed beliefs that are in the way of your desires ooh, yeah. ooh, ooh, let's just stay right there okay. that's a good book title living in beliefs that prevent my desires isn't that all that's going on ever if there's something that you want that's slow to come yes I got beliefs in the way yes and a belief is just a thought I keep thinking and you told me though that my source or greater portion of me for lack of a better word inner being my yeah my inner being is actually guiding me around those so that I actually don't have to figure it out and fix those, Ooh. get them out of the way. Let's talk about that. We talk about the path of least resistance. You follow that concept and then we remind you that you put every bit of the resistance on the path. You weren't born with it there. Nobody else is scattering it on your path. You've put it all there. Then we say, that's all right because your inner being doesn't hold it against you. Your inner being doesn't say, oh, we see what you want, but there's so much resistance on your path, you can't possibly get it. Instead, your inner being just guides you around the resistance. Just come over here for a minute, and then come over here, and then come over here, and then come over here, come over here. So your inner being knows where the resistance is, doesn't judge it, doesn't push against it, doesn't talk about it with you, doesn't ask you to get rid of it, just calls you around it. So your question is so my question is I'm trying now to align more with my inner being so that so that I don't actually even give a rip about the discord that I put in the way so that I can move forward with what I want to do yes. with ease yes. and I'm having difficulty because it seems like because it's really simple why you're having difficulty because when you say I'm not gonna think about that thing that I'm thinking about you're thinking about it you see, the whole point of your inner being leading you around it is so that you don't get snarled up in it and make it more. Right. So if you say I'm having trouble letting it go, then you are sort of snarled up in it. Right. Yeah. So when I meditate, I'm yeah. trying to align with my source. But when you meditate, you do align with your source. You're yep. not trying to do it. It's like saying, I'm going to let go of this cork and I'm going to try to get it to float. No, you're not going to try to get it to float. You're just going to let go of it. It's going to float. So I'm doing it. So we just want you to take the word trying to meditate. You're meditating. When I meditate. Yeah. But I meditate specifically for the purpose to get into alignment with my greater source. Yes. Yes. So that, yes. So that I can keep that alignment yes. um, and move forward yes but i keep the reason we we're saying yes yes because yeah. we we're going to get you in a trap i know because what was going on in your vibration was i meditate so that i can deal with the resistance so that i can get to where i want to go and you need to leave the so that i can deal with the resistance out of it because uh. the whole point of meditating is to ignore the resistance because dealing with it makes it more it's like I'm not going to think about that thing that I'm thinking about. So I'll meditate and I'll get all tuned in and then I'll say, source, now I want to talk about these things that I don't want to think about. <laughs> but source isn't thinking about those things. So the minute you are, you lose your oh, connection. Was, exactly. That's exactly what happens. Yeah. I like just start mind chatter all over yeah. the place. And so instead of this receptive mode, you're in this receptive mode and there's enough to keep it going. So understanding it helps. This is something that's going to help you the most of anything so far because everything that you've learned, everything that you've been living, things that we've talked about, mm -hmm. you just keep getting into a clearer and clearer place. Yes. And you keep thinking, well, soon enough, I should be out in the clearing where there won't be more stuff for me to clear up. But it's sort of fun to figure it out. This is the piece that we believe will help you the most of anything that you've been feeling lately. And that is receptive mode means I'm receiving inspiration or thought from somewhere and we want to make the distinction that there's the receptive mode where you're receiving from your inner being and from your vortex and there's the receptive mode where you're receiving from 
CNN or you're receiving from problems of the world or you're receiving from the momentum of stuff that you've got going oh, I on. Get it, I get it. So just because you feel an impulse to do something doesn't mean that it's a high-minded, high-flying impulse. And we think that there is a little bit of confusion about yeah. that. And that yeah. comes from the trying too hard. And you can solve all of that just by reminding yourself, I just want to feel good. And if we were standing in your physical shoes, we would use these words. We're just going to offer you some words that we know, because remember, we can see the resistance on your trail. Yeah. <laughs> so these are the words that we would use right now to help guide you over and under and around and through that resistance. When an impulse comes, it's sort of like, look over here, look over here. And look over here is the same thing as saying, don't look over there. Look over here is the same thing as saying, don't look over there. It's a subtle difference in that really early days, Jerry and Esther were living in Phoenix when they met us. And in the early days, we were not speaking through Esther in this way. She was typing or we were gesturing. If Jerry would ask something, yes or no, it was an easy way for them to communicate when Esther wasn't with her word processor. And one day they got this inspiration to ask their friends to go hide somewhere in the city of Phoenix and they would use Abraham to come and find them. <laughs> now, Phoenix is a really big city. Yeah, it's yeah. 50 miles in all directions and there were no limitations. Go anywhere that you want, Esther said, and we will come and find you. And the only rule was, we won't quit until we found you, no matter how long it takes. And we'll see you in a little while. So off they went. So Esther is receiving us. She can't tell if it's don't go that way or go that way, because it's the same sensation. Mm -hmm. Don't go that way or go that way. And so she's gesturing and Jerry's driving and off they go and then go that way and off they go and then here. So they stopped and their friends were nowhere around. So go that way, go that way. They filled the tank up three times that night. When they found their friends, and they did, they said, first we went there. And they said, oh, we were there. Our inner being told us to go over there. Uh. And they said, and then we went there. And they said, oh, we were there too. Then our inner being told us to go over there. And Esther said, I'm never playing this stupid game with <laughs> again, Abraham. You didn't tell us that you're going to keep them moving. So what we're getting at is this is something that's always in motion and your inner being is always giving you the impulse that is most beneficial from where you are to where you're wanting to go. Your inner being is always giving you what it knows to be the most likelihood for you to get an impulse. But it's not going to mess with me and have the, the other one the, Never. tell the other one to go somewhere. No, it's not like that. It's not like that. Well, they did with you. The whole point of that was, does Abraham know things that we don't know? Sure. That was the whole point of that. Sure. And they came away from that knowing unequivocally. And the reason we told you that story is because it's a subtle difference between don't do that and do that. And I'm finding it hard to decipher. To decipher which that is. Yeah. And so these are the breadcrumbs that we want to leave for you. The things that we think would make from where you are a little easier for you. This is not a big deal. And there's nothing risky involved here. And you can be lighter and more playful about it. And there are no requirements for you to accomplish. And there's no way of you getting it wrong. And take score just a little less and care more about the way you feel. And let the feelings that you're reaching for be more lighthearted, less intense more ease rather than effort it's going to work out all right rather than i got to get this figured out just that subtle difference in your approach to it will make a big difference in the way you feel you're used to making things happen through action and effort and work and focus and you accomplish a lot in that way but now you are engaged with the energy that creates worlds and there is a power and an influence and a leverage in that kind of energy that is intoxicatingly fabulous, but lighter than you think it is. This is the piece that we want you to hear. If you're moving some heavy object from one place to another, there are some things that are involved in that, like 
first of all you want to be sure that you want to move it over there because it's heavy and then you want to make sure that you have the wherewithal to do it and so there's a lot of preparation in getting ready to do the heavy lifting you know what we're getting at? oh yeah in action there's a lot of heavy lifting in vibration there's none there's no heavy lifting in vibration so effort translates into action in a way that confuses you yes. about how it translates into vibration it's fine-tuning in vibration it's light touch it's light touch with vibration yeah yeah perfect it is it is really thank good. you very much we've enjoyed this interaction <laughs> more than any that has come before because this one has been right out on the leading edge where all of us are these are powerful nows that you are living there's never been a time on this leading edge and this is the leading edge where the variety that is surrounding you has caused so much movement in your vibrational reality the vortex the vibrational reality that precedes your manifested world is faster moving than it has ever been before which means the potential for your satisfying the things that you care about is not only greater but faster in fruition which means you are in a vehicle and you're moving more rapidly down the highway than you ever have before and so your attention to where you are on the highway will bring you satisfaction we don't want you to slow down because going fast is way more fun but we don't want you to go faster than your ability to control yourself in your environment you see so what's happening to you is your environment is calling you into faster and faster motion which means faster and faster thought process which means faster and faster manifestation which means the potential for satisfaction is greater than it's ever been before but the potential for some negative emotion is greater than it's ever been before it's like a giant magnifying glass has been laid down on everything so that whatever it is that's dominant in your vibration is having more emphasis in your experience that's why suffering is greater and thriving is greater that's why poverty is more and abundance is more that's why sickness is more and wellness is more in other words whatever it is that you've got the vibrational habit of projecting is manifesting into your experience more rapidly well what an advantage that is to those like you who now understand and you do what this receptive mode will yield in terms of manifestation and what this receptive mode will yield in terms of manifestation isn't it nice to know that when something's turning out and it doesn't feel good to you while it's turning out that you can recognize what you were doing when it was still in vibrational form that allowed that momentum to become more and more and doesn't it make you more aware of where you are moment by moment doesn't it make you want to be more aware as you are driving this analogous car down your vibrational road doesn't it make you want to not let things get so far in a direction that you don't want them to be before you decide that you're going to do something about it the two tools that are most at your fingertips for maintaining your receptive mode the first is meditation and we know some of you are adverse to it only in the sense that you want more control than it seems to give you and there's a little giving up of control on your way to ultimate control quiet in your mind quiets resistance it quiets thought that quiets resistance and it puts you in sync with who you really are but it also serves another very important purpose it makes you more sensitive to where you are and so your negative emotion sticks out like a bigger sore thumb you find yourself being a little more dramatic than you are used to being or you find yourself wanting to rectify things as you are moving along through your action but we like that newfound sensitivity that you're finding through alignment because it's only through your awareness that something feels a little off that you will have the wherewithal to guide it into something that feels a little better and it's so easy for you to do that given what you now know